To work out the first part of this question, it's worth us taking a snapshot of one second. So in that one second, we have a power of 1 times 10 to the 3 watts per square metre coming from the sun. So that's 1,000 watts per square metre multiplied by an area of 0 0.07 metres squared. So the energy coming from the sun is 70 joules. Now we can work out how much energy is needed by the frying pan in order to allow it to reach 70 degrees and to fry the egg. So we can use E equals MC delta theta. So the mass of the frying pan is 2 kilograms. The specific heat capacity C is 490. And the change in temperature is 70 take away 20, which is 50 degrees. So that gives us a total energy of 49,000 joules. Now in order to work out how long it's going to take to heat the pan to that temperature, we need to divide the total energy 49,000 by the energy supplied by the sun in one second, which is 70 joules. And that will give us... Seven hundred seconds. In the second part of this question, it's important to know that the frying pan that's at seventy degrees going into the bowl of water at twenty degrees, the frying pan is going to cool down and the water is going to warm up. So we can't simply just work out the change in the temperature of the frying pan. We have to consider both at once. So we can do that by saying that E P, that is the energy of the pan. Uh, or the, uh, rather the energy change of the pan is going to be equal to the energy of the water. So the energy removed from the pan is going to be equal to the energy gained by the water. So we can use the equation E equals mc delta theta here with the mass and the specific heat capacity of the pan and the change in temperature of the pan equated to the mass and the specific heat capacity of the, um, of the water and that temperature change. So plugging in our numbers, 2 times 4, 190, multiplied by the change in temperature of the pan. So the pan's starting temperature is 70 degrees, so the change in temperature is going to be 70, take away our unknown final temperature, which we all call T. That's going to be equal to the mass of the water, which is 4, multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, 4,200, multiplied by the change in temperature of the water. So the water's final temperature take away the water's starting temperature. Remember, the t final temperature of the water is going to be the same as the final temperature of the pan, so because they will be in thermal equilibrium, so we can just use T for both. Now, we've got some quite messy maths to do here, so let's have a look at that. As we um, expand these brackets, and ultimately we want to find uh, T.
So our final temperature is approximately 23 degrees Celsius. I'm afraid you just have to crunch through that maths.